when three new players will take on the big board here on People Puzzle. Goodbye. Last time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Little League World Series. Okay, Steve, thank you. 100%. Okay, well, if I win a million, I'm not coming back, so. That's fine. C, final answer. D, the right answer. Yes, sir. $32,000. He's got it right for 64000 I wish I knew. I don't. I don't want to risk the 64. I'm going to use my 50-50. I'm still not sure. I'm going to call a friend. You're 100% sure. Well, all right, let's call it 75% sure. Dave's right. Just won $32,000. I think I'd like to ask that audience. You had $16,000. Now you got $32,000. The winner, Lisa Moore. Now, join us from New York for night 99 of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Thank you very much. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday Night at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Tomorrow night, our 100th episode comes on. We have a special behind-the-scenes look at how our show is produced uh, following that particular program. If you like what happens on camera here, I think you'll find the behind-the-scenes story pretty interesting, too. Lisa Lord knows what it's like. She got into a hot seat in the final seconds of last night's show. But what does it take for you to get from your house to our studio? That's the subject that we'll be covering tomorrow night. And what was it like for you to get from there to here? It was crazy. Yeah? Yeah, How it many was times quite did incredible. You, did you call it? Um, initially, for the first uh, few months that it was on, I was calling numerous times, and I qualified numerous times, but never got that uh, random call back. Really? So even when you qualify, you, you're not so sure you, right. you got it made. Right, right. And then just recently, in the last two weeks, I called and uh, got through and got a call. Good so for you. So you, uh, you won uh, quite a few qualifying rounds. Yes. So. Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm from Timonium, Maryland, which is outside of Baltimore, and um, I'm in the financial sales business, investments and insurances. Mm. And uh, I understand you had a famous father. Uh, <laughs> my father was deputy director of uh, NSA, National Security Agency. Mm -hmm. How exciting for you <laughs> and uh, and your sister who accompanied here, you uh, accompanied you here tonight. Shelby, nice to see you, Shelby. Nice to see you, too. All right, so uh, you ready to go here, Lisa Lord? After I think so. All of that. <laughs> All right, you've won $200. You're 13 questions away from winning $1 million. Here's how we play. The more questions you get right, the more money you win. Once you reach the $1,000 or the $32,000 level, you're guaranteed to leave here with at least that much money. You have all three lifelines left, 50-50. Ask the audience, and you can phone a friend. Now, to play along with Lisa, you log on to ABC.com, click on the Enhanced TV logo, and play against everybody at home using ABC's Enhanced TV. You'll find it a lot of fun. Lisa, are you ready? I guess. Studio audience, are you ready? Yes, we're all ready. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. For $300, Lisa, according to the popular saying, a person who is hallucinating is said to be seeing what? Green clovers, blue diamonds, pink elephants, too many movies. <laughs> um. Apparently, you've never hallucinated. <laughs> which is probably a good thing. I may start now. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever you do, don't start now. Not after all those phone calls. Oh, I'll die if I don't get this right. <laughs> and I know this answer. Well, of course you do. You're Lisa Lord. <laughs> what a name that is, huh? I'm Lisa Lord. You're not. <laughs> and I, I hate to do this now, but I'm going to. I'm going to uh, use a lifeline, and I'm going to ask the audience. you got to stay in the game. You're right. Okay, audience, Lisa needs a little help here. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Eighty-six percent of the audience. Oh. No doubt about it. They say yeah. pink elephants. No doubt about it. Please. Blue diamonds came in second. Okay. Well, I will agree with the audience and choose C, pink elephants. Pink elephants. Final answer. Yes. Pink elephants. The right answer. Thank you, audience. All right. 
We are going now for $500, and here it is. What hairstyle was made popular by the tough-talking member of the A-Team, Mr. T? A mohawk? Buzz cut? Beehive? Page boy. Remember the A-Team? Yeah, I do. Remember Mr. T? Yes, I do. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Why don't you just look at these hairstyles one at a time? I don't want to use my 50-50 because I know what they're going to do. Um... But I'm, I'm going to do it. And I'm, now I'm going to... Everyone's going to be calling me moral and I'm <laughs> No, not really. <laughs> Lisa Lord, you know what she did. Lisa, come on, 18, Mr. T. Mr. T. I know. But I'm not gonna be persuaded by you either. <laughs> All of a sudden, I just, I'm the only friend you got here. I can't believe I can't even think of it. You can't believe it. <laughs> I'm gonna go with A Mohawk. Final answer? Yes. You got it right. <laughs> Can you believe we've only covered two questions? <laughs> Dead if I didn't get that right. Oh, yes, Mr. T and the Page Boy. No, no, Lisa Lord. All right, we're just 11 away from a million. Going for $1,000, and here it comes. In which direction does the needle on a magnetic compass always point? South, east, west, north. I can't believe I got the show. <laughs> you can't believe it. I'm a college graduate. <laughs> Sometimes you, you, <laughs> you look at a map and there's sometimes there's a compass superimposed on the map. Yes, but there's arrows yeah. everywhere. <laughs> you just get through these first five questions, you know, they're primarily for the younger members of our audience. <laughs> you know, three to five. <laughs> just try to have a little fun with Lisa. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> no, don't be silly. Now, come on, Lisa. I know. I wanna... I'm, I know it's one of two. Well, just talk to me. Which, which no, one? I don't like talking. <laughs> no that, talking. That sways my... Uh... Uh -huh. I know, I just want to hear you say it, because maybe sometimes if you say it, it clears it in your mind. <laughs> well, I'm thinking it's either north or south. Or it could be east or west. <laughs> I'm just I'm looking at it, and I'm, it has to be. Come on, Lisa, let's call somebody. What are we? Doing? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna call someone, and he's gonna die when he gets this call. No, he's not. He's gonna be clapping. Uh, Who is it? <laughs> His name is Tom. Shall we call him? Yes. Uh, so. AT and T, please find Tom. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Regis Philbin calling from ABC who wants to be a millionaire. Hi, Regis. How you doing tonight? I'm not doing too good. You tell me. You huh? don't think you're doing good. <laughs> We're here with the beautiful Lisa Lord, and boy, does she need your help. Uh oh. Yeah. Now we've got a question she's going to ask you, and she's going to give you four answers, four possible answers. One of them, of course, the right answer. Okay. Okay. All right. So the next voice you hear will be Lisa. Lisa, you've got 30 seconds, and they start right now. In which direction does the needle on a magnetic compass always point? South, east, west, north. 
Uh, a, a compass always points north. That's what I thought. And I'm sure. <laughs> You're 100% sure? No, 150% sure. Well, <laughs> oh, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Go get them. Thanks. See, Tom didn't laugh. He will one. Uh, I get He was home. so relieved. That was the question. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> I know, Tom. All right, now we're going to let you get composed. First of all, we have to say, is that your final answer? D North is my final answer. And it's the right answer, yes. Lisa has won $1,000. She's going for $2,000. One light line We'll be back. Good clues. something on behalf of the entire staff and crew of our show your own individual compass <laughs> so that you Thank can you. you can never get lost again <laughs> you know the first five questions uh, baffle more people than you would imagine I mean we've lost a lot of contestants some mm -hmm. some of them on the very first question you know mm -hmm. but now as we get into the more difficult uh, areas I'm sure you're going to shine you hope so let me let me talk to your sister, Shelby. What are, are you a school teacher? Yes, I am. Yeah. What did you just think of what happened to your sister here? Um, a little, a little nervous. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're ten away from a million. You're still in the game. What a thousand dollars? Going for two thousand. One lifeline left. Let's play. <laughs> Here it is now for $2,000. Jeb Bush, brother of George W., is currently governor of what state? Jeb Bush. South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Arkansas. Um, the answer would be B, Florida. Final answer? Yes, it is. Absolutely right for $2,000. There you go. $4,000 coming up. What is a hurricane called in Japan? Zephyr, Taipan, Typhoon, Sirocco. I don't like Japanese food. You don't like <laughs> Japanese food? No. Interesting. <laughs> so I have little or no knowledge of Japan. Well, I'll tell you what we can do here. We can maybe narrow it down by two. And yeah, I bet you could. Maybe something will occur to you. You want to do that? Let's, let me think on it. All right. I'm going to answer C, Typhoon. Final answer? Let me think on that. <laughs> yes, C, Typhoon is my final answer. You got it right for four thousand dollars. Believe it or not, Lisa Lord, eight questions away from a million, <laughs> going for eight thousand right now. Which of the following creatures has a body part called a crop? A rabbit? A bird? A tiger? A kangaroo? Oh, gosh. A crop. I think I know what it is. You've actually heard of it before? A crop? Yes, I Good. think so. Good. I actually watched Animal Planet. Sir. Okay. And I'm going to answer B, bird. You think a bird has a crop? Yes. Final answer? Yes. I 
Gosh, a bird has a crop. He's right. I gotta tell you the truth. I didn't know that. I didn't know a bird had a crop. I've heard you don't know a whole lot. Hey! <laughs> Probably right. You still have one lifeline left. We're going for sixteen thousand dollars, and Lisa Lord is on fire. Here it is. What opera remade into a two thousand Broadway musical by Elton John and Tim Rice tells an old Egyptian tale? Tosca, Torrento, Carmen, Aida. The answer is D. Aida. Final answer. Yes, it is. Aida, it is for sixteen thousand. Back, we're going for thirty-two thousand dollars. You may not open. Lisa Lord. Adventure continues, and what an adventure it is, too. See, I, I told you, as soon as you'd get into the uh, the next ten questions, uh, you'd settle down and be just fine. Is this a scary experience for you? Oh, it definitely is. Scarier than the time you spent with Penn and Teller on stage? Well, that was a pretty scary experience. I had uh, knives thrown at me in front of... Uh, 50,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> had no idea that, uh, that it was going to happen, but it was fun. And was you obviously fun. survived. See? Yes, I did. And you'll survive this too. <laughs> All right, so now, Lisa, you've won 16,000. You're six away from a million, and you still have that 50 50 lifeline. Right. We're going for $32,000. Very important here. You get this. Let's play. Here we go. <laughs> Denmark borders on which of the following countries? Germany, Poland, Netherlands, Belgium. I've been to Denmark. <sighs> the countries I went to aren't there. <laughs> Take my 50-50. Want to do that? Yes. All right, fine. Computer, please take away two of the wrong answers for Lisa, leaving one wrong answer and the correct one. Germany, Netherlands. Now you can always walk away with the 16,000. Right. I didn't come here. I, I came here to go for it. Had a girl? Good. So let's go for it. $32,000. Germany, Netherlands. I didn't, think, I didn't think the Netherlands was... I think it's a group of countries. And uh, I'm pretty positive about it. I'm going to say the answer is A, Germany. Final answer? No. Yes, it's my final answer. You just won $32,000. The adventure of Lisa Lord continues. <laughs> Five away from a million. You won 32. We're going to 64,000. All the lifelines are gone. It's going to be all Lisa Lord now, and here it comes. Watch out. <laughs> In 1936, what shoe company first introduced the classic penny loafer to the U.S.? Gucci, Hush Puppies, G.H. Bass and Company, Floorshop. Nothing to lose here. No, I know, and um, I'm pretty sure I know this answer. <laughs> but it might just be too easy. I'm gonna go with my gut, and I'm gonna say C, G. H. Bass and Company. G. H. Bass and Company, huh? Yes. Final answer? I 
hate saying that, but yes. <laughs> well, you were right for sixty-four. great comebacks of all time. <laughs> the struggle we had with 300, 500, and here hey, she's cruising right through taking these. Taking you a while to warm up. There you go. You're doing just great now. All right, you won 64. Four away from a million. <laughs> here it is for $125,000. What literary work coined the term Yahoo to refer to a brutish person? Ulysses? Utopia? Alice in Wonderland? Gulliver's Travel. I have no idea. <laughs> Not? I mean, I have a, 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 a feeling because I'm thinking of a brutish person and I'm thinking of those before uh, works. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Well, if you miss you, you'll lose 32,000. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna have to stop and walk away. Are you? Yeah. Final decision? Final decision. I understand. Uh, what would be uh, your guess? Gulliver's Travels. Gulliver's Travels, huh? Well, you would have won $125,000, but no, Lisa, come on, $64,000. It's a lot of fun. Good luck to you. Let's see it. Right out there. Well, as I said, that was the greatest comeback in the history of our show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? She was a terrific contestant. But right now, we have 10 new contestants who have called our 800 number and wound up right here. Who are they tonight? Let's find out. They are Paul Gates, Owensville, Indiana. Lauren Port, Brighton, Michigan. Christine Gardner, Potsdam, Pennsylvania. Terry Oakley, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Dan Black, Las Vegas, Nevada. Renee North, Vancouver, Washington. Amy Krause. Woodbury, Minnesota, Jeremy Fass, Nevada, Missouri, John Tyka, Plato, Texas, and Amy Becker, Horace Gold, Oregon. Hey everybody, welcome to our show. Now here's how it works in a moment. A question and four answers will appear on your screens. The one who puts those answers in the correct order in the fastest time will be our next player. Audience, we need complete silence here for this uh, question, and here it comes. Put these Broadway musicals in the order they first debuted, starting with the earliest. 42nd Street, Funny Girl, The Wiz, Jelly's Last Jam. Okay, time's up. Let's take a look at these musicals in the correct order, starting with the earliest. First one was Funny Girl, and then The Wiz. 42nd Street and Kelly's Last Jam. That's the right order. Let's see who got it right. The fastest time to win it. Amy. Becker is here. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and play with Amy. Are you ready? I'm... Call now for a free PFAS assessment. Amy Becker from uh, Forest Grove, Oregon. That's uh, near Portland, Oregon. She's a fourth grade uh, uh, school teacher. Nice to have you here, Thank Amy. You. I guess the whole class is watching, Oh, right? the whole school, the whole town. Sure. What's the name of the school? Gaston Elementary, and they wanted me to make sure that I said it. And they even gave you a going away party. Oh, they did. They played the game, didn't they? They played the game, and I bombed. I did horribly, and... Not another one, Amy! my confidence. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. you'll do just fine. Your husband, uh, Bob, is with you? Hi, Bob. How you doing? Good. How are you? Bob's a plumber? Uh-huh. And you met in college? We did. Yeah. Well, look, you're here. We're all pulling for you. 
You okay? Uh -huh. All right, good. Here we go. You know the rules. You know about the lifelines. 50-50. Ask the audience. Phone a friend, Amy. So if you're ready, let's do it. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> $100. In the popular Christmas song, what part of Rudolph the reindeer glowed? His nose, his eyes, antlers, personality. The answer's A, his nose. Yes, it was Rudolph's nose. $200. According to the saying, entering into a problematic situation is like opening a can of what? Please, bees, worms, Chef Boyardee. The answer is C, worms. Yes, it's the right answer. $300. What color is the standard American school bus? Do you really want me to read all these? Sure you do. White, red, yellow, salmon. The answer is C, yellow. Yes, it's a yellow school bus. You're right for 300 Here it is for $500. What kitchen utensil is spiral shaped with a sharp tip? Ice pick, egg slicer, melon baller, corkscrew. The answer is D, corkscrew. Corkscrew, the right answer, yes. Yeah, spiral shaped with a sharp tip for $1,000. According to its slogan, Lifetime Television is television for who? Men, women, children, Senior citizens. The answer is B, women. Yes, lifetime for women. $1,000. Lisa Lone is probably saying, why did I get those five? <laughs> I know, she probably is. Okay, you're 10 away from a million. We're going for $2,000, and here it is. During the American Revolution, colonists who still supported the King of England were called what? Wings? Minutemen? Tories, Buccaneers. I don't know for sure, so I'm going to ask the audience. Can I ask the audience? All right, fine, audience. We need a little help here for Amy on your keypads using A, B, C, or D. Please vote now. So it's pretty spread out here, but 44% believe it's Tories. Wigs came in uh, second at uh, 34%. Minutemen got uh, 20%. And 2% of the audience believes they're Buccaneers. Well, that's pretty close. And I'm not, I'm not convinced of either. Um, Still have two more lifelines yeah. if you need them. Call somebody and narrow it down like two. I think that I will take the 50-50. All right, computer, take away two of the wrong answers, please, leaving Amy one wrong answer and the correct one. Yeah. I'm not sure. This is a lot easier in my living room. A whole lot easier. Well, we could always call somebody. I'm sure there's somebody at school who knows the answer. Mm -hmm. Well, I think just making a guess would be just a guess. So I think I really want to keep going, so I think I'm going to call somebody. Who's that? I'll call Jerry. He's my uncle. Jerry Urkel. All right, fine. AT&T, bring us uh, Uncle Jerry. Hello. Uncle Jerry? Yes. Yeah, hi, Regis Philbin here, calling from New York. How are you? Good, Regis. Yourself? I'm here with Amy. Okay. Kind of hung up on a question here. So she's going to come on, read the question. Two answers, incidentally. Just two possible answers. One of them is the right one. You ready? Yes. All right, fine, Jerry. Amy, it's all yours. 30 seconds starts now. During the American Revolution, colonists who still supported the King of England were called what? Whigs or Tories? Um, boy, I believe, I believe they were Tories. How sure are you, Jerry? Probably 60, 65 percent, maybe. Like the audience. <laughs> okay, thank you for your help. Well, good luck. Thanks. Bye-bye. Uncle Jerry goes with the audience here. 
That's all I can do is trust that. I'm going to say C, Tories. Final answer? Final answer. Yes, it's the right answer for $2,000. Switch, everything can change in an instant. A right answer can move you straight into first place, but a wrong answer could send you back to last. That's what makes it so exciting. Switch every night. It's